welcome tonight this is encourage our pastor what a great moment again saturday night some of you it's saturday morning others it's the evening depending on where you are watching from the world listen every man and woman of god needs to hear god's word need to be discipled also need to be equipped need to be encouraged need to be envisioned we need to fellowship and relate with each other so that we can all stand strong and be able to effectively and appropriately continue with the work of the ministry and that's why this show is here we are so grateful and tonight we have a guest with us a man of god and before we do that go ahead and begin to share the page on youtube on uh, facebook and share with your friends in the pastors fellowships and you know church uh, groups we look forward for an amazing moment tonight in jesus mighty name welcome man of god this is a bishop uh, uh, sam um Maingi, and we're gonna uh, have you introduced, you know, and of course you should introduce yourself instead of me introducing yourself. Exactly. It's your first time on LV TV, exactly. and uh, you told me you lead a watch this uh, uh, station. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and introduce ourselves. That's your camera, uh, and then we'll continue with the rest of the discussion. Man, thank you so much, Apostle. Yeah, such an exciting moment to be here today. I love LV TV, and uh, I thank God for this program of encourage a pastor. is the man that is supposed to know everything in the world, carrying all the burdens of people. So if there's a program for him to get encouraged, is the best program. And so I really thank mm. you for this. Awesome. My name is Reverend Sam Maingi. Of course, um, Apostle has uh, a wind that I'm getting consecrated in, in two months' time to a bishop. I preach with Christian Church International. That is CCI. We are located at Roy. And uh, I love the Lord. He's my savior. And I serve him passionately. Awesome. Yes. Awesome, man of God. Welcome. Now, today we're going to be talking about the pastor and his children. This is an amazing subject because I tell you, pastor's kids and what goes around the pastor's family is a critical matter within the body of Christ. And I am told that Reverend Sam has... Uh, been uh, taking care of you know children you know pastors kids in your you know ministry yes and yes. denomination you yes. know, tell, tell us a little bit about your assignment yeah um, Christian Church International in Kenya we have about uh, 500 churches and mm. uh, I'm the one in charge of the children of the pastors Wow um, this interest came up because they found uh, I had started a ministry for the children of pastors even before I joined mm -hmm. the ministry mm -hmm. That is uh, 2007. Mm -hmm. That is when uh, I gathered children of pastors from our region. Wow. That is Makwen, where I come from. Mm. And uh, we started preaching together and uh, walking along together. The idea was to mentor them mm. and uh, to get an alternative leader from their father and mother. Wow. Because now I just noticed that children of pastors do not have a close relationship with the parents. Mm -hmm because of the notions behind it mm -hmm. and so um, you find they are in the church they are not serving number one mm -hmm. number two they don't want even to be called children of pastors because mm -hmm. of the issues around there which you want to talk about mm -hmm. and then number three um they are taken not to be children so they want to be children mm -hmm. so when we started together i call them sons of the prophet including the girls oh, wow. and um it's been an awesome walk Mm -hmm. mentoring them of course we could go for missions mm -hmm. programs they could not preach they could not drive me mm -hmm. i took those who were in high school and uh they grew with me mm -hmm. today is a wonderful story oh wow yeah yeah so that's... now the denomination saw that interest and yeah. they put me in charge mm -hmm. uh, nationally or rather internationally to be in charge of them Oh, that's an amazing thing. Yep. Of course, you have a family. Tell us about your family <laughs> and your children as you talk about the pastor's kids. Yes, definitely. I'm married to Pastor Millicent. Mm. We serve together. And uh, I have uh, two daughters. Right. I have um, a university student and uh, one who is joining university. That's awesome. Yes. They are already teenagers and already you know grown up yeah they tell me don't say you have children yeah say you have people in the house no tell, <laughs> tell them tell them that even even they are 70 their parents will still call them children and they, they, they suppose it's age yeah yeah awesome well this is a very important subject and i like uh, you calling them sons of the prophets yep. and the need and the burden you saw 
And yeah. so pastors and leaders and all the people that are tuned in here tonight, I'm too sure if you have uh, uh, kids in the house as a pastor, this program is a kind of program you need to call them from their rooms and just sit with them uh, in your living room or wherever you're watching. This is something each one of them should watch so that we can glean some wisdom from uh, God's servant right here. Uh, well, let's basically uh, talk about this. You know, I saw in the scriptures in First Timothy chapter 3, the qualifications of elders. One must take care of his household and his family well and how that impacts their ministry as part of the things you know are required for elders and that if things are not working well among your children or on your children then there is a problem in leadership i don't know what Definitely. you know you begin to now that you've been handling this matter um, oh yeah um <clears throat> it's a bit interesting and tough for men of god mm -hmm. because uh, the lifestyle of a child of a pastor mm -hmm is determined by very many things mm -hmm. or it's affected by very many things number one basically we have a crisis universally of yeah. uh, bringing children yeah. whereby people do not really have time with the children mm -hmm. and uh, for pastors it's worse mm -hmm. and that's why apostle is talking about that in mm -hmm. the bible mm -hmm. that it's like a qualification yeah. your family should be exemplary mm -hmm. your family should be doing well and um, I would say, as a servant of God, we need to understand mm. that uh, in, in Swahili, we say the way you bring up a child, that's why the child will be. Mm. And it is very true. It's difficult for you to dedicate your time to your children and uh, you deliberately grow with them mm. and they, they don't make it in life. Yeah. The truth is this. The devil is a thief. He can come and steal them. Yeah. But according to the book of Proverbs, whatever you planted in them cannot be plucked out. The yeah. foundation. Yeah. Wherever they will go. Mm. The Bible says they will hear a voice. Right. And because they are familiar with the voice, they are familiar with the ways of God. Mm. It's very easy for them to turn. This is what I usually say. Somebody who has been brought up in the ways of God and the rebels because of now... Um, peer pressure, mm -hmm. environment where they are in. Um, and another one who has been brought up by non-believers or careless parents, mm. they are not equal. Why is because that so? this one brought up by servants of God, according to the word of God, they have a very strong foundation. Right. And um, kind of train up your child the way exactly, you should go. Exactly, exactly. You will never do So they have a foundation. Mm. And the day they will, because the Spirit of God will keep on speaking to them. Mm. And they are familiar. They can, they know God is talking to me. Mm. They know this is what Daddy said. Mm. It, it, there's so much a lot. Mm. They will definitely turn to the Lord. But the other one has nothing to refer to. Okay. The other mm. one has, uh, is not familiar with that voice. Right. So to me, uh, it's a responsibility of a man of God or a woman of God to have time to talk, to teach, to train his children I'm without sure. fearing the challenges that are in there. Oh, awesome. Yep. I'm sure that uh, when we continue with the second segment, we'll be looking at how then you mm -hmm. can redeem, mm -hmm. correct, you yeah, know, restore, and so forth. Yep. But what are the general challenges you have found with pastor's kids um, within your ministry now that you're in charge of very many of them and also what are some of the challenges one from the kids point of view mm -hmm. and also challenges from the parents point of view because you know what pastors are going through but let's first of all see what are you hearing the kids say uh are some of the general challenges they're experiencing um i will go interchangeably okay. because uh, like uh, for instance um I, I, next time I'll come, I'll come with some of them. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I remember one time I would tell them, you'll become pastors. And that is the last thing they want to hear. Yeah, they don't want to hear. They don't want to hear that. Because of the lifestyle of the parents. There are so many pastors who have portrayed um, a negative image of what a man of God should be. But there are pastors who have portrayed, I don't really mean money, having money or having mm. many things. Yeah. Because having peace with your wife has nothing to do with much money. Yeah. You know, so there are people who have not portrayed. And because of that, now the children make judgment of life as per their parents because they are the people they can see. Mm. 
so because uh, some portray a negative poverty um, wrangles and every negative thing they experience in the church they bring it on the table and so these children hate past uh, hate to be a pastor hate their parents hate the members hate themselves they feel unfortunate that i'm brought up by these people who talk about god who which the god that doesn't do to them what we expect mm. them to experience they are living in a poor way they are struggling they are fighting so it's wrong for servants of god to give a wrong image that you it is, speaks volumes they may never talk to you they may never they may never come and uh, have a discussion daddy we don't like this they may never at all but that is what they take from mm. the parents and then um, number two it is the pressure for the children the pressure around among the other children within the oh, church yeah. Yeah. within the church within their institutions mm -hmm. where they learn one time i was preaching in a certain high school and um, a young boy got saved and i had interest to talk to him mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we had a length discussion but one thing is said because the boy was really bound mm -hmm. into fornication mm -hmm. He came and confessed that I've been I've been bound, and I asked, and but he told me, I I have been I have been targeting specific children. He was like he was an agent of the devil. Hmm. He said I I sleep with the children of pastors, and he counted to me hmm. several renowned servants of God uh, and uh, gospel musicians. He told me the daughter of so and so. His muse started doing this, the daughter of so and so is muse. So you find children are also fight they have a demonic force against them, children of pastors. There are some yeah. forces against them which may outweigh them. So besides the talking, they mm -hmm. also need intercessory. Wow. Yeah. They what also you just them. said is very powerful. Yeah. Because of the battle of their parents. Uh -huh. The devil targets the weak yes yes spot yes which yes. tells us therefore for the church and our viewers and people are praying for the pastor don't just pray for the pastor oh, pray yeah. for his wife yeah pray for his children actually you can imagine every pastor when they wake up in the morning they are fighting the devil in the name of jesus you are casting out yeah. devils you are preaching in regions and people are receiving christ you are demol uh, demolishing the world the establishments of the kingdom of the enemy now your child is not praying your child is probably not born again. Your child does not that have that experience you have with God. So now, where will the devil go? To so the devil will go there. Now, the members in the church, they have taught how to pray for pastor. They are taught on how to encourage a pastor. They are taught on how to walk with the pastor. And uh, children of pastors are, are there alone. Talk about the pressure. You alluded to that matter. You said they go, you know, they face a lot of pressure oh, yeah. from the members of the congregation and so forth. Describe what that you looks know, like. Like this pressure, for instance, is um, number one, people don't expect them to be like children. No, they expect they them to, to be, be as, a, as anointed as the parent. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my, my daughter telling me that. Um, she was struggling with a certain subject and then she was saying she was crying because one teacher said and you are a son you are a daughter of a pastor <laughs> you know that, that thing really hit her so much i mean you just now hate to be a a child of a pastor because the the illusion is you are a child of the perfect man you are not supposed to fail in yeah any way. yeah so that is wrong when that pressure is inserted in them they are like not expected to live like children have you and come, they have normal life have you come across some of them who would say that you you are raised by offering <laughs> <laughs> now that is the worst <laughs> monocular sadaka yeah. they're eating our offerings yeah and um, your clothes your education now they hate everything but to me i also think the man of God has a role to play, even to educate the members mm -hmm. about his children. I remember when uh, one of our daughters cleared um, primary school, she was expecting to get over 400 marks. Mm -hmm. And uh, something happened. She had, she had uh, close to 400, and she didn't like it because that was not her marks. And then she was, she was 
crying and screaming, falling down. And we were like, what's the problem? And the, the problem was not the performance. The mm. problem was, what now will people say, you know, all that. Yeah. So now we had to talk to the members. When children clear their exams, mm. don't, don't go asking them how many marks. How mm. many. You mm. don't know what it means to them. Absolutely. So it's like we also need to educate our people. Mm. Our children are just like your children. Mm. Because that expectation can really make them... Some of them have even committed suicide. Yeah. Yeah. Another pastor told me um, a, a, a desk mate of her daughter mm. asked, told the daughter, if you fail this exam, mm. where will you go? Uh, and where, which church will you go to? You know, those kind of statements. Yeah. So much pressure. You will, will, you will put the church to shame. Oh, no. You know, those statements. And the girl was getting depressed because of that and going to the hospital every fainting. And they were not understanding. So when we met the pastor, the pastor told me, imagine, even myself. Mm. You are I, wondering. I also, t no, no, no. He, mm. he repented. He told me, even myself, I told my daughter the same. Don't, uh, don't, 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 don't bring shame to this church. Oh, no. You know, so I was just talking to him, telling him, my friend, embrace your daughter, encourage her. Now that you know she's average, hmm. as the teachers categorize yeah, call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> According to their subjects. So yeah, the children, the yes, the children are facing the pressure is a reality Too in much. school, in college, within the church church need to be educated now because uh, we are still at the early stages of this discussion what from the pastor's perspective what are some of the challenges the pastors are telling you they are facing with their children um these children um, first of all as they are growing many pastors are ignorant and uh, they don't have we i'm a pastor we don't have not just sitting with your child, mm -hmm. not praying in the evening, not just eating together. Because sometimes when you do those things, we feel like, I give my children time. They are not friends with the children. Mm. They are not friends. Yeah. Now, because they are not friends, these children get friends outside the family set up. Wow. And the worst is the kind of friend they get. Mm. Yeah. Most um, times, and this is so much unfortunate, they get negative friends. Yeah. yeah, because so that, that's a so problem planning. to the pastor. Now, yeah. you see your daughter coming, dressing up this way. But uh, now the only way you will approach your daughter or your son is a shout. Because he or she is not your friend. Yeah. You, you, you are not taking her for dinner. You're not taking her for outing. You're not taking him for lunch mm. and a share. And then argue on the basis of friendship. Mm. You know, when we are friends, I can tell you... I, I don't like these ties you mm. use. I don't like this, these suits you use. They yeah. are like this. Because you are my friend. Absolutely. But when I tell you, when you have no relationship, we only meet mm. and they preach with you. And then I ask you, why, why, do, you, why do you like strict mm. uh, suits? Mm. You know, these suits are for mm. these kinds of people. You know, mm. you will, that comment, you will definitely take it negatively. Yeah. So that has made them, when they come, have that problem and now the so the pastors don't have friendship with their kids yes they don't they have. think just eating together is, is it just in the house and it's prayer enough. and praying they together. need to go and praying together <laughs> they need to go beyond that to relate. And so the pastors need to be educated in terms of how do you even raise yes, the children yes, yes yes and the pastors are busy doing the revivals the crusades the preaching the services yes and this area is neglected yes and now the the, the, the challenge they get with their children is what they get from outside because Young people are too jumpy and mm. they're so energetic. Yeah. When you just pray with them, read a verse, sing a hymn, eat together, and they go and sleep, that is not enough. They can go to the phone the <laughs> whole night up to 3 a.m. Wow. So you don't they are know. gathering more information oh, yes. more than the little one you gave them. Yes, go to their Instagram, go to their Facebook page, the things you find there, go to their gallery, the photos they have been sent to. So unless you are friends, you are able to discuss on friendly level. Um, it is not possible. The things they you, you give them a lot of room to gather a lot from outside, mm. and uh, when they gather from outside now, when they come, you are not at par to discuss. Yeah. You are not friends. Yeah, that is now what that's amazing. Yeah. Let's mention um, before in the next segment we'll be dealing with the solutions.
oh, yeah. and what men of God can do and women of God with their kids. There is a little talk often within the ministries that pastor's kids, uh, you know, should not be involved. The pastor should not bring his children into the pulpit. To, should not make it a business. Yeah, it's not a family, family business, business. You know, and uh, keep the pastor's kids far from the pulpit. You know, you man of God, look for others, not your own family members. Let's deal with that and tell me what you've heard out there. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just laughing over it because um, I usually say this every time I'm handling the mm. pastor's children issues mm. in the church. Or I want to do some education. Yeah. <laughs> I usually ask them, what do you feel when you see your own son standing here and uh, ministering with me? Maybe he or she is leading praise, playing mm. guitar, mm. or maybe giving announcements. What do you feel? And they always tell me, we feel good. The church members are very happy. Yeah. Their parents feel, well, and I, their yeah, they even talk, you even meet with them in the marketplace and they tell you, my son serves with Apostle Juma. Mm. My son serves with Bishop so and so, mm. they, they feel good. No parent will tell you, my my son is 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 relating with a drunkard or doing the negative thing. Mm. They will not tell you where they are. But when he is in a church, yeah, ah, my son is one of the ministers in this church. So mm. I ask them, then what do you think I would feel? Because I'm a parent. Before I became a pastor, yeah, I'm a parent. Before I'm a pastor, I'm a parent. Mm. I would also feel the same. Mm. <laughs> Secondly, let me just make fun out of it. Mm. Um, I usually tell them, our God is God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Not Isaac. Mm. His son, oh. Isaac, and okay. his grandson. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob. I like As that. In, um, I like that. And anybody doing big business or in, uh, doing something is expecting their children to take up. Mm. Uh, not because of the, besides the legacy, but the kind of sacrifices you've made mm. to that work. Yeah. Now, it is only our wives, <clears throat> our spouses for that matter, mm. and our children who has a glimpse of the kind of sacrifices which servants of God make. Right. Number two, they are the victims <laughs> of circumstances. Right. Or rather circumstance of you being a pastor. Yeah. They are the ones who um, go through it all. Mm. You know, when you just come in the house, yeah. fully exhausted and you can't talk. When, when you yes. always come in the house and you are hungry. Yeah. When you come in the house, you're tired, you are hurt, you are wounded. Um, I know somebody would be asking me, is there no day you go home happy? But ministry has has a lot of negative experience in every exhaustion. in every 20 <laughs> sessions of counseling maybe only one person came with a testimony the rest were with a testimony burdens. they won't come yeah be sure if somebody's lining up there it's yeah. a problem it's a problem one day i i saw a girl entering in our bishop's office she was coming to see the secretary um and then um she was sorted out and she was moving out and i I knew the girl, she's from the same family with the bishop. So I was like, you, why don't you get to the office and say hi to bishop? And she's like, no, 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 oh, I'm okay. I don't talk to bishop. What, what, what will I talk, because she was a young girl. Mm. What will I tell the bishop? I, I told her, come here. I, I told her, you see us, who are, are seated here, me included. Mm. There's nobody here who has a positive thing for the bishop. Like me, I'm working for the bishop. I'm going for money. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't even have, or the church doesn't even have money. Mm. We will struggle there, and I will leave him discouraged. Mm. This one has this, this one has. I, I knew some of the people what it was. You just enter and say, uncle or mm -hmm. dad, whatever you call him <laughs> in your family relations, mm. Um, I just came to say hi, and you smile to him, and you go. Uh, and she said, really, is it important? I said, wow. that's a medicine. Wow. That's medicine. So she accepted and walked in. Those. The museum was, the bishop, the elderly man was screaming, and wow. he was happy, excited. My daughter, you wow. made my day. He stood, he hugged her, and she came and told me, I, I cannot imagine. Wow. 
my 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 uncle i don't know what you were calling him. he's so excited i didn't know it has anything to do and let me tell you that is all what men of god lack you know so men of god are really wounded and those hard things and they carry bad it's natural mm. <laughs> even if you want to feel good actually mm. like yesterday i was just driving through a certain outside a certain premises and the the person at the gate was a lady mm -hmm. uh, she was the one watching in uniform and she had a label mm -hmm. but she was standing like this so when i drove out i looked at her i reversed and i called her by name mm -hmm. please come are, are you okay oh, and she said I, i'm okay i'm okay mm -hmm. i told her no 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 i'm a man of god i'm a pastor mm -hmm. tell me are you okay and then when i said i'm a pastor she said she just busted and she was man of god this way they, now you can imagine this is not my member this is yeah. not i don't even know her i prayed for her while still on my steering i prayed for her i gave her some money and i drove now there's no positive things you do <laughs> and then problems. you get at home and your girl tells you I, uh, you tell her oh i was with, i had one thousand and gave somebody yeah let me wait a bit so they really suffer i wonder why it's wrong for those people to participate. Number two, according to the word of God. Yeah, I want you to hold that thought there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Encourager Pastor. We've been talking with uh, Reverend Sam uh, Maingi right here from the Christian Church International in Rai. This first segment has been amazing, just looking at some of the stuff that pastor's kids are going through and some of the things pastors themselves are going through and the issues there. And when we go back, come back because we want to take a break we will look into some of the things we can share and encourage and tell leaders and those kids on what they can do so we'll take a break we'll be back in a moment Welcome back. This is Encourager Pastor. We are having a very serious discussion right here concerning the pastor and his children. And uh, we've gone through a lot of stuff, what parents are going through, what kids are going through, the pressure, and all those kind of stuff. And I tell you, we have a man of God right here who is leading in charge and has been ministering to pastor's kids. In fact, I like what he just said, he used to read McWhinney calling those pastor's kids the sons of the prophets. That was very amazing. And uh, Reverend Sam is the one in charge of uh, pastor's kids within the uh, Christian Church International, of course, with your bishop, who is my friend, Bishop uh, oh, yeah. Dr. Henry Mlandi, exactly. uh, for many years, uh, met him in 1984. <laughs> I mean, it's a blessing yeah. and uh, is, a, is a great voice in this country. Amen. So you are dealing with the kids within that ministry of Christian Church International. Yeah. And it's a great joy. Now, so tell me how long you've done this ministry and what are some of the highlights, some of the great achievements, some of the great stories? Because it's not all depressing. There must be certain things you have seen and you can tell there was this one young, young, wonderful young man or young girl this was a couple of years ago see what the lord has done after abc happened you know oh yeah how long um, have you done this and what are some of the highlights i started 2007 as wow. i said um down there with uh young children mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. pastors yeah <clears throat> i used to preach with them travel with them and then uh 2009 is when i began the uh, the center in Rwai, yeah. the saints restoration center mm -hmm. which is under christian church international mm -hmm. 
um, I remember God, uh, my, my wife asking me what you're going to call our center. And I told her, we call it Restoration Center. Mm. And she was, my wife doesn't like long names. Yeah, you know? it must be short. <laughs> our second daughter is called Vicky. The first daughter is called Glad. She said, I want to be called Mama Glad, you know, not mm. Gladys. Mm -hmm. She loves short names. So she said, no, it's the Christian Church International Saints Restoration Center. These are long names. Mm. But I told her, I, God spoke to me about Elijah. Uh, when Elijah did great wonders, and the following minute, a woman swears, who is in authority, that I will cut his head. Mm -hmm. And the man of God is fed up and is giving up and telling the Lord he wants to die. Mm -hmm. And um, the angel of the Lord uh, later gave him food, tapped him and encouraged him, told him the journey is long. And I told my wife, I feel I'm the angel. I'm, I'm the one to encourage a man of God. Mm -hmm and a, a saint who is born again, but there are issues that are breaking him to throw away the towel. Mm. And uh, one of them is the children of pastors. They mm. can really make you powerless and uh, paralyzed when mm. you find them living an opposite life of what you live. Mm. So we started then with those children when they were very young at high school. Mm. And I remember the son, the Unfortunately, the son is, is, is let now. The son to my bishop down there in the village, yeah. um, was called Morris, telling the father, um, when now he came to the city, mm. because I started the church 2009, mm. he just told the father, I, I just found a church. And daddy, now I have a pastor. And she, the daddy was like, Have I not been here? But I, I started pastoring you even before you knew how to talk. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> And, uh, and uh, later, is the bishop was telling me, now, Pastor Sam, I know, I know what you are doing. Mm. Because I found that you are, undress, you, are, you are friends to these guys, and uh, they are living different life than when they are living here. Now, when I used to go down there with them, I would say to the pastors, I came along, uh, the church that time, we were like 13 people, mm. 18 so I would tell them I've come uh, with the church elders. I uh, used to make fun. And then I call them small boys. They have just come for colleges and yeah. universities. They cannot even introduce themselves. Yeah. Um, and the, the pastors are laughing. Yeah. And they are there today. Wow. When we go down there, mm. and I say I came with the elders or leaders of the church, mm. they respect them. Some are pastors. Wow. And, uh, actually, in our church, every child of a pastor, whenever we know these are son of a pastor, these are daughter of a pastor, we never allow them to sit down. Why? They know the basics of ministry. Mm. What is important now is, is to nurture them spiritually. Wow. So there are those who are, are rebelled in high school. Mm. The parents didn't know. Yeah. There are those who are rebelled in universities. Mm. The parents didn't know. Up to date. Some of the parents don't, don't know their lives. And please don't ask me because I will not tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they found somebody they, they can confine mm. who was preaching restoration. Of course, no, I'm not compromising. Mm. But I'm giving them room. Mm. I'm giving them time. Mm. Man of God is always what I say. Yeah. Um, you don't know what it feels when a man is seated and he's given up on his son or his daughter, and he sees you as an apostle seated with that son, talking to him, mm. or driving with him, mm. or taking lunch with him. Mm. I, I went somewhere one day, one of our sons in the Lord had rebelled, mm. and he's working in that town. The previous holiday, I had done a big conference there. Mm. And so I knew the man as boy as messed. And I drove in that market to look for him. I drove three hours from Nairobi to get that boy where he's working. I got in the market. I took him. I told him, let's go for, for lunch. I mm. bought meat in one of the butcheries. So when we went there eating with that young man, one, one associate pastor in the place I was doing the conference saw me eating with the tax collector. <laughs> <laughs> The Jesus style. He never greeted me, never talked to me. He walked out. And I would understand him. Mm. Well, the boy has messed in that town, done everything. Mm. And, and, and he's, he, he, they feel ashamed. 
so they have like dumped him mm. i'm talking to him and we we eat meat and we drove with him i did that i think twice or thrice and the young man one day i told him we we were somewhere i told him my my son you 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 have really done a lot of mess but you have not gotten to the edge you have not fallen completely yeah you, you have not uh, gotten to a place where there is no remedy you can still come back mm. he tells me those are the words god used god used to change him completely he felt but i told him there's a there's a place when you go to it's there's no be, remedy yeah yeah this beer may mess you mm. this um working with girls may may give you some sickness there are things you may get into mm. which you may never reverse yeah. but for now yeah. as far as i'm concerned you're good to go you can still change yet to the rest of the people they feel is useless wow and then i found that daddy had uh, almost given up with him um, so i went and picked him and brought him in my house mm. we we sat with him he, he he struggled with many things today is a key leader in the church wow Today is working. His head is 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 is, is, the, is the senior most where he works. Wow. He's married. He has children. He's a respectful man. He's one of the people I can depend on when it comes to outreach ministry. And so there are stories like that, countless. This is encouraging. So we want to speak to somebody who's watching a pastor, family, where probably your children have gone wayward, and they are no longer following Christ, and they look to be in a total mess. Here are stories of transformation and restoration. And we want you to know that the God who called you and helped you to lay a foundation for those children, like the scripture said, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will never depart. In other words, the story we just heard right here, that young man was redeemed and restored and brought back. We will be praying at the end when that time comes so that that family that is in pain and confusion and the children, boys and girls are away from God, that the Holy Spirit will begin to work with you. And I want you to believe at that moment. And as we continue this discussion, I'm very impressed to hear that story. And that, to me, is a highlight of our discussion. Yep. That pastor's kids can be restored, those that went away. Yes. And these are the experiences you have heard. Actually, what I usually say, um, and I say it authoritatively in pastors' meetings, there is no child of ours that is going to error. Mm. All of them. We will Shall go with them say. to heaven. Amen. You know why? <clears throat> I'm just imagining for you to give your life. Probably, Apostle, you were brought up by, by parents who were born again. And... <laughs> yourself i don't know about no, you no, no, the story but is some a little, of, is a little different <laughs> but some of us yeah. i know they had to struggle even after 30 years with a lot of yeah. wrong foundations and mm. uh, chains and uh, curses and too many traditions yeah. even after being born again even now when you're a pastor there are things you have to really stand out and fight mm. think about your son before you approach the the girl now your wife mm. you went and talked to uh, at least i know Ap uh, apostle james mm. Mm. <laughs> your, your, your you are friends. friends you went to people like that and them, guys we need to pray we need to get married mm. you know and i can imagine you prayed and then you got a girl the girl is also praying mm. you went to a man of god they laid hands on you mm. they joined you they declared things and they spoke um, fruitfulness you got a baby when that baby was two weeks old you started mm. laying hands on the baby mm. for months until a child came out and you were praying now you want to tell me this child is going to be that wicked no. i usually tell them the the, 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 the things you have are, are, are foreign spirit are, are not indigenous <laughs> they don't have roots <laughs> They're just foreign bodies. Yeah, they're just things. It's like dust on you. You can yeah. wipe it and it'll go. So yeah. even if they are so much, you think they are stuck into wickedness. There is a voice. They understand the voice of God. They have seen the goodness of God in your family. Right. They have seen you, Father, when you had nothing and mm -hmm. you trusted in God and you're doing this much. They know God is alive. Mm -hmm. They will not err. So I want to encourage a pastor mm -hmm. that your children will not err. Your children will not die as rebels 
somehow mm. they will hear the voice of God. Somehow, That's very encouraging. Somehow, yeah. Let's move to something else on matters the pastor and his children. Mm. Should all pastors' children become pastors? No. But uh, there are those who will become engineers. But you can be an engineer preacher. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to escape that preaching aspect. <laughs> Sharing the word of God does not mean carrying a Bible and no. wearing a collar and a chain and, you know, being ordained. It really doesn't mean to be like that. Because we are not, yeah. oh, the Bible says, so though we are in the same body, yeah. Paul says we are different. Yeah. There is the finger, there is the leg. Yeah. Not everything carries things. Not yeah. everything hears. Not every part of the body can smell. So the child who is coming under pressure, pastor's kid, getting pressure from the parents to become a pastor and a minister, yet they feel a different calling. What do you tell the child? What do you tell the parent? No, look at what even the government, our government has come up with, the CBC, the, the, the competence-based. Mm -hmm. you know, it has to be... Uh, something she's also flowing with mm. and then ideally mm. let me use a good example of some of my uh, friends I have a pastor is a late bishop and he has sons all of them are in the ministry mm. one is an apostle he, he moves around but the church is his base mm. he walks around the world mm. a powerful apostle the other one is a pastor very powerful he can lead groups he can mm. he can lead departments he's good in music he mm. has the department of music mm. um he's a powerful preacher mm. another one is an accountant mm. he takes care of the finance are they not serving the lord yes sir. another one is a purely musician his work is to work with the band mm. and all that so basically you don't have to be pastor so and so mm. to serve god but a child of a pastor should know the expectation of the man of God and of God and of the woman of God, the parent, mm. is that um, they should have fruits of the tree that they are. Mm. Because they are, they are born again, they should share the good news. Um, I'm told of a pastor, I mean a, 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 a doctor who was treating um, a mother of one of uh, servants of God um, he's, a, he's actually your friend. He, he, he was giving us that testimony. Mama was in the hospital mm -hmm. and uh, she was being treated. And uh, she, one time she started praying and uh, she started praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. And the doctors were, were worried. They thought she's nuts. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what she, she was doing. They thought she, she's dying or something. Mm -hmm. But there's a doctor who was a man of God, full of the spirit of God. He's not a pastor per se. But he's, a, he's saved. Mm -hmm. When he heard the woman speaking in tongues, he ran and came and they started speaking in tongues. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and they started praying. You know, I usually Because he could a, understand the language. Yes, that language. I usually give an example of one day I was, um, I was in uh, Accra and uh, I needed a cab. And then I was very exhausted. So the cab came and when it came, I threw the bag in. I burst and... Um, speaking in tongues, and the driver is born again, full of the Holy Ghost. He started speaking in tongues, wow. my friend, and we started driving, speaking in tongues. <laughs> so you see, a child of a pastor, there are things he knows mm. which he can portray in whichever area they are in. Okay. But it's easier for a child of a pastor to become a pastor. Because he has a lot of basics on the work of God. Because that's where he's grown. Yeah, but it should not be a law. No. Every one of you must be pastors. No. It shouldn't be that. They should be allowed to flow to in flow. the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. They maintain and the, the witness they, of Christ. They could be in other areas. For mm. instance, now the people who are taking care of your yeah. machines here. Yeah. Um, you still need someone who has the values of God. Absolutely. Yeah, so they could be in any other area, not mm. necessarily in the preaching arena. Awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, we here in the scriptures because we almost uh, coming to uh, land this plane timothy very powerful young man who mm -hmm. was picked up by paul mm -hmm. but he had a very amazing grandmother lois mm -hmm. very amazing mother eunice yeah and paul says the genuine faith in you is mm -hmm. that we trace it back mm -hmm. to your grandmother yes to your mother yes and now is in you yes and paul was very proud of this son mm -hmm. because of the family uh, DNA and 
raised up in the house and so this is very encouraging because yeah. we want the pastors to know you are in the level of the lois mm -hmm. and the eunice mm -hmm. and the team mothers you are raising in your own house mm -hmm. they're gonna be in the kingdom and in the ministry yeah many days to come yep right that is true um and uh, i will still insist that uh, if somebody has a good foundation he mm -hmm. cannot error and thus it's easy for him to serve the Lord and his generation to serve the Lord. Yeah. Uh, the level of sacrifice you give, mm. it is God pays back mm. because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. God knows how to pay back. Absolutely. Some of us, we are serving the Lord and our past, our parents were not born again. My daddy was not born again. Mm. Uh, he was a tradi traditionalist and fortunately he, he passed on before mm. I was big. I think I was three years or so. Mm. But mama was too committed in the church mm. because of that. Yeah. Actually, I remember I was taking her to the fellowship. I was 12 years in class 6, mm. taking her to the fellowship of Tukuten Dereza. She was yeah. an Anglican. Yeah. And that's where I met Christ. That's where I met a preacher. He ministered to me, led me to Christ. Mm. And now I left Mama. I started taking now my sisters to conferences, mm. to open air meetings, to prayer vigils, and all that. Mm. So the people ahead of you will make it easier for you. And now you, are, you cannot depart from that. So you find that faith can be traced back mm. from this person who was mentored by so and so and mentored another one and man of god i want you to look at some people mm -hmm. it it's rarely that people who are serving the lord god said when they are old and um, i don't mean there are not many yeah there, are there are so many the there are so many and many of them most when they were young they gave their lives to jesus when they were young uh, our archbishop uh, uh, Molandi, Dr. Henry Molandi, he always challenges us and asks us whenever we are in a pastor's meeting, mm. those who gave their lives to Jesus when they were in primary school and high schools mm. and uh, colleges, mm. lift up your hand. Almost everybody, mm. just a few people got saved when they were mature. Mm. And <laughs> I usually make fun out of it. Now, those who get saved when they, were, when they are mature, there are some things they had adopted which are mm. very hard to live. Mm. Some of them are hot tempered, like mm. Elisha. He would curse, including his deputy. Uh, he would he would make boys get killed on the road. Yeah, he was hot tempered, very much anointed, mm. but hot tempered. But when you start working with the Lord when you are young, God deals with so many things because you make too many mistakes. Mm -hmm. God perfects you. God works in your life because you have a long way and you have too many mentors. Mm. You know, like if you gave your life to Jesus when you were in class six, you can imagine. For me, I was in class two. Class two. Nine years. So you, you were every day, people are born again, they don't do that. Mm. Throughout, throughout. So there are things you want to do like this, you are told, don't dress like this, mm. don't talk. There are things, even if you go to which country, there are clothes you can't put on. Mm. But, but there are people who just got saved the other day when they are adopted to certain kind of lifestyles, which mm. it's very difficult for them to live. Wow. So before we, 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 go, we, we, we are done, Let's now talk to a pastor on how he can redeem their children that have gone wayward. We only have, you know, a couple of minutes, very yes. few minutes. Yes. Uh, you know, some bullets and some pointers, you know, because there's somebody listening to us and is wondering, what do I do about my child? Yes. And at the beginning, you talked about the matter of friendship, and I'm sure there are a couple of other things. Yeah. L let's address that quickly. Definitely, we need friendship. That is basic, because yeah. you will not apply anything else if there is no... Uh, friendship. Number yeah. two is uh, one we talk, what we talked about, intercessory. Yeah. There would be too much on the opposite, but just intercede for your children. Be like Abraham. Yeah. He's interceding for Lot. Yeah. And he saved the life of Lot yeah. as he interceded for him. Mm. And also, the other thing is allow children to flow, as we said, in their expertise, expertise what they are good at. Mm -hmm. Don't force your child to be a teacher if she's not a teacher or he's not a teacher or a junior, engineer or doctor. Mm -hmm. Just allow them to flow. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is uh, let them participate in the church. Let the at their pastor level participate in the church. In the church. Right. Don't tell them you must preach and they are in class six. Let <laughs> them 
dance with the children. Yeah. Let them jump with the children. If they are in the youth, let them go to the outreach. Mm. Facilitate them. Let them notice you. Encourage them to participate in the things of God. And then the other thing is, is also good. And uh, that one, my bishop used to mention, mm. that uh, when I meet with your children, I mean, I come with my family and you have your family, there is a... Uh, these are it's easier for them to love each other because mm. these children of yours have the same values with my children mm. you know they don't shout they don't misbehave they are calm it's easy for them to interact mm. and even develop uh, relationships mm. right now in the bunch of those young people we were with i've seen some get married mm. yeah several get married and you can imagine uh, uh, Apostle Juma, I'm coming to your place for mm. diary payment, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. We had an experience <laughs> the other day. <laughs> yeah, you know, you had because, experience. Because uh, my daughter was married by a bishop's son. You see. So we had a quite, you see, quite some Now encounters. it's good to be sharing and visiting and interacting with people of the same kind. It's very easy now for that character to spill to the other side and mm. they find themselves in funny relationships which cannot be undone. Yeah. And now your child starts coming back to the Lord from a wounded background whereby she has children, probably she has been messed, so many, many things. I like what you just said because one of my friends from Europe uh, is an international man of God. We met and we've related for over 25 years yeah. and he was passing through the, our airport, JKIA. Yeah. And he called me, gave me a notice, said, let's meet because I have a few hours as yeah. I proceed. Yes. And then when we met uh, in the airport, we were having some coffee and saying, how are your children? Are they in ministry? Yeah. You know, our children are in ministry. He said, your children and our children need to begin to meet. Yes. So that in the future, yeah. they invite each other. Actually, right now it is happening. Right now it is happening. Wow. Children of pastors, because it's, it's common that people marry their friends. Yeah. Yeah. They marry the people they have been meeting frequently with because those are the people you admire. Mm -hmm. When you meet, they, um, the other thing, a pastor is good to encourage the children or, uh, their children with the positives also. Not always, but also. Um, not once, not twice, I, I, my, my children would say, we want this. I tell them, let's pray about it. And then sometimes I bring what they wanted. And they ask me, where did you get this from? I tell them, the church gave me. You know, one time we were going outside the country for a holiday and they told me, we were given this as our, uh, as our thanksgiving, I mean, uh, as servants of God, and we are going to enjoy it together. We travel together. So, so it's also good for them to, to, to enjoy the, the, the positive side of the ministry. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't only show them the negatives and they are not... The see pain the and the fights eh, and the quarrels. Eh, they don't see you smiling. They don't yeah. see you enjoying. Yeah. It's also good to involve them on the positive sides. Awesome. You, you, you tell them this one, it's because we are serving the Lord. Awesome. Travel with them. To, to, uh, when I was doing ministry in mm. the beginning, and I would go, you know, these ministries, you would go and you are going by faith. I, I've seen people yes. giving offerings of late and mm. appreciating preachers. Those days there are no but designers. you remember your times, uh, you preach nothing, you mm. preach nothing. And I was telling some pastors, such places you don't go with your children. <laughs> but, but you're going to suffer and suffer with them. Yeah, but, uh, you to good but if you are going to places whereby probably people are putting you in good hotel, you can tell them, you'll be with me in the other place, carry my Bible. Yeah. And they see that they, this is a, a good blessing. thing. It's a blessing. Not only seeing you crying throughout. Awesome. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we can't finish this. It's an amazing uh, Reverend Sam Maingi from the CCI, Christian Church International, Hawaii, uh, the Saints Restoration Center. Exactly. Right? He's an amazing man of God. He shared so much. And I do believe pastors and our audience and listeners in whichever country you come from, the issues are more or less the same. And we are coming to the close of the program. And he's already shared, you've already shared, you know, what a man of God can do or what the family can do. And that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. It's going to help our people. Just in 30 seconds, look at that camera. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're parting short to the man of God as yeah. we close. Uh, we thank God for this program of encouraging the servants of God. Uh, servants of God, you don't need to give up on your children in case you are seeing them 
on the negative side. God is ministering to them. The prayers you have been praying and uh, the labor you have done in the Lord, the Bible says it's not in vain. Your child will not, um, will not error. They will not rebel. I want to say just the words Jesus spoke to Martha and Mary concerning their brother. And uh, the brother is dead and is rotten and, uh, you know, everything. But Jesus said, the sickness is not unto death. When he came there, he said, your brother will rise again. So in case your child is on the negative side, you don't like the way they dress, you don't like the friends they have, you don't like what they do, I want to tell you in the name of Jesus, your son will live again. Your, 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 your older brother, your younger brother will live again. Your daughter will live again. It is the will of God for your children to benefit from what you do. That is our portion in the name of the Lord. I've seen so many children of pastors coming back to the Lord and loving the Lord. Yours is not an exception. Awesome. And with those few words, we bring this to a close. My name is Apostle David Juma and Reverend Sam, we'll see you next time. Thank you so God much. God bless you. So have a good night. We'll see you another time. Bye-bye.